The first lecture will be about the pathophysiology of the CTG. We are aiming to understand the pathophysiology of the CTG, so we will interpret the CTG very well. As we stress from the introduction that the teamwork is the functional unit of the health care. Normal fetal circulation. The difference between the placental support fetal circulation and independent postnatal circulation are the presence of the placental circulation and the lack of circulation to the lung. Adaptation which is allowing the fetal circulation, umbilical vein and artery, ductus venosus, foramen ovale, and ductus arteriosus. The oxygenated blood enters the fetal circulation from placenta through the umbilical vein which will be bypass the liver through the ductus venosus and combined with the deoxygenated blood from the inferior vena cava. Then blood join the deoxygenated blood from the superior vena cava and empty to the right atrium. Since the pressure in the right atrium is more than the left atrium, the blood shunted through the foramen ovale. Some blood traveling from the right atrium to the right ventricle to pass through the pulmonary trunk, but the most of the blood bypassed the pulmonary artery and moved directly to the aorta through the ductus arteriosus. Deoxygenated blood returned to the placenta via the umbilical artery originated from the internal iliac near the bladder. Different factor affecting the fetal heart rate. Catecholamine, chemoreceptor, baroreceptor, through autonomic nervous system, acting through sympathetic and parasympathetic, which will lead to controlling the fetal heart rate. Different factors causing changing in the fetal heart rate, starting by increasing maternal temperature, normal change in the fetal activity like movement, changing in placental blood flow, fetal hypoxia, medication, and external stimuli. The fetus is monitored either by external fetal monitoring or internal fetal monitoring. To guarantee more accurate assessment of the fetal heart rate monitoring, if it's difficult to be monitored externally, internal fetal monitoring should be fixed. When we are interpreting a fetal heart rate, there is four features we should keep in our mind. Baseline rate, baseline variability, baseline acceleration, and baseline deceleration. The baseline fetal heart rate is the heart rate ranging that occurring between contraction. So you have to guarantee to read the fetal heart rate between the contraction. The average heart rate is between 110 and 160. It's the least sensitive measure of the fetal well-being. The presence of baseline above 160, we call it tachycardia, whereas the presence of the baseline below 110, we call it the bradycardia. There are many causes of the fetal tachycardia, but the most common cause of the fetal tachycardia is fetal asphyxia, fetal hypovolemia, tachyarrhythmia, maternal temperature, and maternal medicine. Whereas the fetal bradycardia can be caused by persistent vagal tone, severe fetal asphyxia, bradyarrhythmia, maternal medication. Fetal heart rate variability have two components, long-term variability and short-term variability. The question which we have to answer is why there is a variability. The variability occurs as the effect of sympathetic and parasympathetic 
autonomic nervous system on the heart. When the sympathetic increase the fetal heart rate, the parasympathetic act to reduce the fetal heart rate. And the fluctuation between sympathetic and parasympathetic will bring in the long-term variability. As we mentioned that long-term variability is influenced by sympathetic traffic. Long-term variability is 5 to 15 beat per minute for 5 second duration. It is the most powerful intrapartum indicator of immediate fetal condition. The cardioregulatory center located in the floor of the medulla is under the influence of other center like respiratory center which is located near to it and the reticular activating system. It's also received impulses from different receptor. Receive impulses from peripheral chemoreceptor which is located in the carotid body, in the aortic body and in the carotid artery. These receptor, they are influenced by fluctuation of the oxygen carbon dioxide concentration. So whenever there is a drop in the oxygen concentration or increase in the carbon dioxide concentration, impulses will be sent from this carotid body and the carotid and the aortic body toward the cardioregulatory center directly and it will affect the respiratory center which later on the, the respiratory center affecting the cardioregulatory center. The cardioregulatory center respond to these impulses by sympathetic parasympathetic effect on the SA node. Other receptor which is affecting the cardioregulatory center is the volume receptor which is located in the greater thoracic vein and the right atrium and it's under the influence of fluctuation of blood pressure. So whenever there is increase, increase or decrease in the blood pressure, the volume receptor will send impulses to the cardioregulatory center. The baroreceptor which is located in the carotid sinuses and in the aortic precipitation receptor, they are under the influence also of fluctuation of blood pressure. Other receptor, the stretch receptor which is located in the lung, whenever there is fetal breathing, this is will send impulses directly to the reticular activating system which will be affecting the cardioregulatory center. The pain receptor, the proprioceptors in the skin, the joint, and posterior pharyngeal receptor, all these receptors, whenever there is a fetal movement, that these receptors will send impulses to the cortex, to the brain cortex, and these will be affecting the reticular activating system in the middle brain. And it will be presented as a fluctuation in the long-term variability. Now we know that the SA node which is located in the heart is under the influence of the cardioregulatory center which is affected by the reticular activating system in the midbrain which is influenced by any cortical activity. In a preterm fetus less than 34 weeks, the autonomic sympathetic nervous system it is well developed whereas autonomic parasympathetic vagus it is less developed. And as a result of that, the fetal baseline tachycardia would increase long-term variability and decrease in the short-term variability is the characteristic feature of fetal heart rate in the preterm baby. When the baby grow more than 34 weeks, the sympathetic and parasympathetic vagus, both they are affecting the heart in almost equal way. And this is will affecting the SA node and result in the fetal baseline 10 to 16 bit per minute with good long term and good short term variability. Now we know that the cardioregulatory center is running under the influence of reticular activating system in the midbrain 
and affected by the chemoreceptor, baroreceptor, and volume receptor, which is located all over the body. The reticular activating system getting its impulses from the joint pain, from the joint, from the pain, from the fetal movement, from the respiratory movement. So whenever the baby is sleeping, he is going through the sleep awake cycle, which is lasting for 40 minutes. And during this period, there will be decreased of long-term variability or sometime an absent of long-term variability. Whenever there is a fetal hypoxia, there will be decrease or absence of the long-term variability. But the time limit, which is the 40 minutes during which the baby, after which he will awake, will differentiate between fetal hypoxia and sleep-awake cycle. Other thing which we can do to differentiate it between fetal hypoxia and sleep-awake cycle is to do BB examination, stretching, the, clenching the head of the baby, do vibroacoustic stimulation, and if the baby awake and he's moving, the reticular activating system will activate the cardiovascular center, and will we, we will get sympathetic impulses, which will be reflected on the long-term variability. So periodic sleep awake cycle oscillation every 40 minutes will indirectly affecting the SA node and will result in the reduction in the long-term variability. Where is a constant input from different receptor which is affecting the cardioregulatory center which is the nervous tissue, the most oxygen dependent tissue will leading to the baseline heart rate variability. So any cause will depress the central nervous system, will leading to reduction in long-term variability, where a primary cardiac disorder will lead to reduced short-term variability. Many factors alter the long-term variability, like central nervous system depression by drug, beta adrenergic blocker, or interruption of the vagal afferent traffic by sleep period. This is reduced long-term variability. Alteration of the cardiac contractions, like supraventricular tachyarrhythmia and bradyarrhythmia. Hypoxia, which will affect the autonomic parasympathetic vagus and will reduce the long-term variability. Short-term variability is 2 to 4 heartbeat per 1 to 2 seconds. The SA node is regulated by the vagal efferent fiber. So what is affecting the long-term variability is the sympathetic. What is affecting the short-term variability is the parasympathetic. So whenever there is increase in the vagal, this is will reduce the fetal heart. And whenever there is reducing in the vagal, this will increase the fetal heart. Many factors affecting the baseline variability, or what we are calling the short-term variability. There is a factor cause reduced short-term variability, like alteration of the cardiac contractility, central nervous system suppression, and vagal effect interruptions. There is another factor which cause increased variability, like fetal hemorrhage, vulnerable cord syndrome. Vulnerable cord syndrome, fetal hemorrhage, gross body movement, prolonged uterine contraction will lead to saltatory variability. Saltatory variability is increased when the amplitude of the long-term variability cycle is more than 30 beats per minute. Now we finish talking about the variability. We will talk now about the acceleration. Acceleration defined as transient increase in the heart rate greater than 15 beat per minute for 15 second duration. Two acceleration in 20 minute is considered reactive trace. Acceleration as a reassuring sign as they show a fetal responsiveness and the integrity of the mechanism controlling the heart. Whenever you are conducting a CTG, don't put the lady in the 
flat position because the baby will compressing the inferior vena cava which will lead to the reducing the venous return to the maternal heart reducing the cardiac output which will lead to the systematic hypotension decreased placental perfusion fetal tachycardia and late deceleration so what we need is to put the lady in the semi-sitting position or put a below below her right shoulder so this is well preventing inferior vena cava compression.